So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name's Ben Lowry, and today we've got Rob, Volunteerist Rebel, on the line. How you doing, Rob? How's it going? Yeah, Pretty great. Good. So, you recently made the transition from kind of regular libertarian to full-on volunteerist, I don't want a government, free market, anarchy type of thing. Is that right? Yes, I, I let go in uh, November and December. Okay, so tell us about your journey. So, why? Why? <laughs> Well, I've been on this journey for, God, it, it has to be at least six or seven years, but uh, from being like a normal, I guess an average person coming all the way down to uh, volunteers and going down the rabbit hole. Uh, but last year, I uh, was a hardcore libertarian, supported Ron Paul, did some campaigning, went to sign waves and protests and all of that jazz. And, um, and then uh, come, the election, uh, come the election in the States, uh, I wanted to support the Libertarian Party, so... I, uh, I bit my tongue and uh, swallowed my pride and voted for Gary Johnson. And that, among a lot of other things, like watching a bunch more YouTube videos on volunteerism and anarchy and whatnot, I finally came to the realization that by doing so, I'm just, I'm just endorsing the system that I don't agree with. And I finally just decided to let go and like I want to be free and the government's not the answer to be free. Right, got it. So, um... Yeah, you know, obviously there's a lot of mainline libertarians and constitutionalists that that do believe that you know we need to get back to the constitution and and a small yeah. government is what we need and all that type of thing and um so what would you what would you say what's your views on that now well my channel is basically dedicated to those people i mean i talk about anything volunteerism i'm gonna have a lot of different you know different uh topics i'd like to talk about but uh Right, right now, a lot of my videos are dedicated to those people, you know, constitutionalists, uh, minarchists, people that are like, well, we want to get back to the Constitution for the states and whatnot and, you know, just follow that. Well, my whole point is, I, for one, I've been a constitutionalist probably for longer than six years. I was always a history buff. I've read the Constitution probably 10 or 15, 20, 100 times. I've lost count. And when you really look at it and you base it with the non-aggression principle, there's so much stuff in the Constitution that is – aggressive that is going to get is forcing you to comply and when you look at it where you know i did my video where just 39 people signed it and that went into effect for four million people at the time and now all of us and we weren't even alive then well you're in you know you're in britain but nonetheless everyone here in the states uh and uh yeah people need to wake up constitutionalists need to wake up that it's just a doc it was just a contract for the people at that time or at least the people that signed it yeah, totally. You know, without meaning to piss anybody off, it's the most overrated waste of space and it's the most dangerous, misleading document ever written. Yeah. And, you know, I know that might aggravate some people, but, you know, that's basically the bottom line. And, you know, there's that phrase, it was e the Constitution either permitted the you know the police state that's now emerging or it was powerless to prevent it, right? Either way, it was a useless piece of paper, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the whole thing with that is, like, first off, that would have that would have pissed me off if you told me that a year and a half ago, to be honest. But uh, um, no, the the whole thing is like the Tenth Amendment of the Bill of Rights, you know, and the powers not delegated to this uh, to the federal government, thereby delegated to the states, has n basically never been enforced. No one's ever really tried. To, I mean, they have, but for the most part, look at what the U.S. government's doing in the last you know hundred years, well, over the last decade, and. 99% of what they do is unconstitutional. So if they're already doing what's unconstitutional, what's the point of going back to it if it's never been followed from the beginning? I mean, even you go all the way back to George Washington, he didn't even follow the Constitution. Right, right. There you go. So um, your YouTube channel, I really like your videos, Rob. I mean, you give short little speeches on different topics, and I encourage people to go to your channel, youtube.com slash volunteerist rebel. And... Um, and we, I, th I really resonate. I think we're on the same page. I think we think along the same lines, and uh, so it's it's really good. There's a few. I've got a few questions written down. So you recently sure. started using Bitcoin, yeah? Yes. Uh, I haven't bought that much with Bitcoin yet. I kind of I, I want to really try and embrace it because I feel like that. I don't want to be cliche, but it is kind of like the currency of the revolution, or at least the currency of you know for voluntary uh, societies, because that's. It's one way that we can get off of uh, government issued currencies. We can get outside the system by using this currency. It's a valid currency that we should embrace. And it's kind of crazy because if you watch it, it's been going way up in price lately too. I mean, it's gone. I bought Bitcoin at like 13 uh, uh, US dollars, and it's now over 22 when I checked this morning, and it's it's still rising. 
Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I encourage everyone to use Bitcoin as much as they can. Yeah, it really seems to be actually taken off. Like people are quoting for their time and their products and their services in Bitcoin now, right? Or, or, or you know, more and more people are. And, and I guess the more that people start to adopt it and start to forget about the dollar, then it's only going to grow, I hope, right? Oh, oh, I hope. Like, I actually have, like, a link to donate Bitcoin if someone actually wants to donate some money to me and try to get my operation off the ground. But, uh, um, no, I hope everyone starts using Bitcoin. I would love to be able to use more Bitcoin, you know, use Bitcoin for all my purchases. One problem I see with Bitcoin, there are a lot of websites that use it online, but not nearly as enough as I wish there would be. I love to be able to buy anything I need online with Bitcoin. And there are websites that do that, but not nearly enough competition or enough sites that are still embracing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. It's like, oh, it's, no, it, it's exciting, isn't it? It's kind of a step in the right direction because it's very hard for the government or the IRS to... It's very slippery, isn't it? It's just one, it's just one more thing that's difficult for them to control, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, just just to, just to be off the system is uh, a plus in my book. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what's your current what's your current plans for your own activism? I know you're doing the the video blogging, but are you like doing any events or doing any street activism or are um, you meeting up with people or what? Well, for one, uh, me and my wife uh, about a week or so ago uh, signed up for the Free State Project. So we're moving to New Hampshire. Hopefully by the end of the year, or at least by January next year, we gotta save up. You know, it's a move. You gotta save a lot of money to get there. Um, but for the next year, I plan on at least trying to get to as many activism uh, things in Chicago as possible. But like how you, I remember I was watching an interview I think with uh, Michael Chang where you're saying how you feel alone uh, over there. I feel your pain. I'm in Chicago. I'm in the home of uh, Obama Nation over here. Every car has an Obama bumper sticker, you know, me I'm talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> me talking to these people about uh, freedom is uh, it's very hard to do. It's very hard to do. They're not very receptive to freedom. Wow. So I'm kind of isolated here. I mean, there are a lot of libertarians and stuff like that in the Chicagoland area, but I mean, there's millions of people, and for every one person that I, uh, that I meet that's awake or at least, you know, open to volunteerism, anarchy, freedom, libertarianism, or whatnot, I meet, like, a few hundred people that aren't. Right. So, wow, that's really brave yeah. of you. So you and your wife are actually going to leave Chicago and go to New Hampshire. Um, yes. This, actually, I don't know much about, what what's it called, the Free State Project? Yes, the Free State Project. I know, so like, some of the listeners will know, some of them won't. So would you give us a bit of an introduction, what that's about? Well, I'm not like a huge expert on the Free State Project, but basically their whole philosophy, they already have, I think, 1,300 people there. They have 13,000 signers that pledged to move there. Uh, it's still small, but they've already had huge inroads in New Hampshire. The, the beauty of New Hampshire is it's it's not densely populated. There's only like, I think, 1.3 million, something like that, in the entire state. And really? uh, yeah, and they have, a, even though I don't agree with supporting the state, uh, their house, uh, their representatives in the state house of New Hampshire is so large that one person only represents like 3,000 people. So you get a few hundred activists in each area, they can sway a vote. They've already had some like 17, some people elected or whatnot. But even then, besides all that stuff and trying to change that or, you know, maybe eliminate the, gov uh, this, the government of New Hampshire or like secede from the union and be its own country and then break that down even further because you just can't get to vo a volunteer society overnight. You have to go through stages. Um, just to be around like-minded individuals is more than enough for me. Right. Wow. Yeah, just, be, just so I don't feel crazy, you know. Uh, yeah, just being around like-minded individuals is more than enough for me to move. Oh man, that's so cool. Um, listen, what do you think of that guy down in um, Nevada, the guy that wants to run for governor, and he's doing loads of, have you seen him doing loads of YouTube videos, and he's he's making some strong, like, statements. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not familiar with this. He's inviting, he's basically, you know, pro, liberty, small government kind of thing, you know, states' rights, constitution, etc., and he wants to run for governor of Nevada. Quite a young guy, he looks like he's in his 30s or maybe early 40s or something, and he, he's, okay. he's, he's doing some amazingly powerful videos, he's making some bold statements, and he's inviting people to come to uh, Nevada, and he's declaring that when he becomes governor, you know, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. If if the fe if the feds come to Nevada trying to enforce their bullshit, is, is sheriffs are going to arrest them and and all this type of thing is quite quite interesting. 
I'll have to check it out. I, I would support that. Any uh, any state politician that's willing to stand up to the federal government. Like, I advocate self-governance, but I would, re- I would love to see a dissolving of the federal government, at least go down to the states, because, like I said, you have to have a progression getting down to a completely voluntary nature of a society. Yeah, quite interesting. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's, uh, maybe I'll put it on the video description afterwards or something. So, um, what do you reckon of the Blue State... Uh, sorry, Blue Ridge Liberty Project, Chase Rachels and Justin Stout? I've heard of, I've just recently heard about that um, a couple weeks ago. I gave them more power. I noticed what, in South Carolina, right? Uh, I can't remember. South I, think Carolina. It, I think it's, it's north. North or South Carolina, regardless. Um, their, their whole thing is they want to completely op- operate outside the state and whatnot. More power to them. There's also the whole, I don't know if you've heard of it, the uh, John Bush's uh, Lone Star Libertopia project in central Texas is kind of a competition to that as well. Right. Um, there's, I'm not going to say in competition in the marketplace. I mean, I always, the biggest reason I'm going to uh, for the Free State Project, I back that, is because they've been doing it for almost 10 years now, and they actually have people move there. I know they have people moved in these locations as well, but I'm sure their numbers are not nearly as high as the Free State Project. And I, they have more momentum going right now than anybody else. So I kind of feel as if they have the better chance of succeeding than those two locations, but I'm not against them having that. I mean, uh, free market competition is only going to make all three of those be better. Yeah. Wow, it's so exciting. Just imagine, maybe this is the beginning of actually new, just like, maybe these are the seeds, the beginnings of voluntary societies. Maybe they will grow and maybe the conventional it, government will shrink. And You know, it, it is an exciting time to live. We're witnessing so much history going on. Like, if you just open your eyes and look around for a second, I mean, what we advocate may not happen in our lifetime, but we're witnessing change happening at just not like, you know, in regards to philosophy. So many people are waking up. You see technology rising so fast and everything's changing. You know, the paradigm is shifting and we're living to experience this right now. It's a great time to be alive. Yeah, so exciting. I agree. Uh, listen, just give us a little brief introduction, explanation to volunteerism, anarchism, because, you know, there might be a lot of people listening. They might not really be familiar with the arguments, and so it might be new to people. So just give us a brief rundown. All right. Uh, my whole thing with volunteerism and anarchism, uh, I kinda, there's not really much of a difference, in my opinion. The only thing that I see with volunteerism is they really push the non-aggression principle more than anarchists, so that's why I kind of like label, my, I guess label myself for that, but I kind of like using the word volunteerism more for some of the fact that aren't anarchism has such a negative connotation with the uh, general population. But uh, no, basically, long story short, you own yourself. You're a free, sovereign ind- uh, individual, and no one has the authority to tell you what you can or cannot do as long as you're respecting someone else's personal uh, freedom. Right, but what? Right, let me just play devil's advocate. But you're saying we don't need a government because you know we we need a voluntary society because of the non-aggression principle. But what are we supposed to do with violent criminals and police and how? You know, surely society oh, would fall apart, Rob. <laughs> I I don't. Well, every for every argument that people make for that, all I say is, how is that different from now? You know, like you know, what are we going to do with all these people? You know, all these people stealing. Well, the government you're supporting stealing from me every day. They're enslaving me. How is that any different from what you're uh, discussing? But for uh, and I'd rather have someone steal from me once on the street than someone point a gun steal from me from every paycheck for my entire life. Um, but uh, even if you know how we would deal with that, you can have some sort of protection services uh, organized that would protect you. You can have a free market arbitrary system that you can take people to. But at the end of the day, you would be able to defend yourself against aggression from other people. And people would look at what they're doing as whether it's morally ethical to do so, not whether or not they can either, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, whether or not you can. Uh, uh, get away with it, but whether or not it's ethically moral to do so. Because if there's no laws, you're going to think, should I do this? Not whether or not I can get away with it from the law. Do you think it's all just wishful thinking? That's what some people think. They think you, like, everyone would have to behave like an angel, and it's never going to happen, and human nature, people aren't nice, and it would be nice if we could have a voluntary society, but realistically, we need police and a strong government. What do you say to that? Um, I say that that is a simple fact that, uh, I mean, they might be, I don't want to say they're right, and in my opinion, what I'm advocating is not a utopia. In all honesty, I just want to be left alone, plain and simple. 
But uh, they're always, you're never going to get rid of murder. You're never going to get rid of theft. These things are always going to happen regardless of in a voluntary society or in a, uh, you know, basically enslavement society that we have today. It's still going to happen. But what I'm advocating is trying to reduce that to a minimal amount as possible. Yeah, I agree. So um, for people that might be new to these type of ideas, what resources or websites or books or YouTube channels, what would you recommend? What's your favorite stuff? Oh, um, in all honesty, it kind of depends on where they are in the rabbit hole, I guess. Um, if they're libertarians and they're already kind of awake to the idea of personal freedom, first off, anything that Stefan Molyneux does is, you know, he helped me wake up. Uh, Stefan Maloney and Michael Shanklin, uh, your interviews, uh, just Google volunteerism and go online and find as much as you can on volunteerism, anarchy, uh, the non-aggression principle. I mean, there's so much stuff that people have put out that does it would help tremendously. That and start listening to uh, also a lot of stuff that Adam Kokesh does as well, like his podcast and stuff. Listen to him. Um, there's so much stuff out there to listen. Just open your mind and you know do, do your own research and figure it out. Yeah, I completely agree. And you know what? I, I, all the resources you just mentioned, I completely agree with. Stefan Molyneux, Adam Kokesh, they're, they're great. And you know what I've noticed? Since I've only been interested, I've only considered myself a voluntarist in the last 12 months, or certainly within the last 18 months anyway. And the friends, my new friends that are anarcho-capitalists, they're just so on point. They're so smart. They're so sharp. They're so intelligent. They're, they're, they're just real. They see, everybody seems to be well-adjusted, intelligent, rational, genuinely nice people that, that yeah. arrive at this philosophy, right? It's, it's almost like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but the maniacs or, don't seem to arrive at volunteerism, you know? No, yeah, the maniacs are, they're somehow still indoctrinated to the state, and they're also, it, they're also kind of tribalistic, where like, well, you know, what about them? We got to protect us from them, these other people. I don't even know what, what, you know, what they're really going with that. But uh, no, like, it's kind of crazy, because I've been following the liberty movement for years. Like, Ron Paul helped wake me up, but uh, I was kind of woken up before that. And, uh, but when I discovered him, that kind of like threw me way forward. And right now I've watched, I watch a lot of, uh, um, uh, YouTube videos in the Liberty Movement and listen to a lot of different podcasts. And it's crazy. You're seeing like this huge awakening, um, with a lot of libertarians and a lot of Ron Paul supporters were like, you know what, uh, you know, Ron Paul or whatever taught us right or whoever taught us right. And, uh. You know, we were going to take the non-aggression principle to the logical next evolution of it, which is no go no state. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just it's surprising to see this huge awakening the last year with so many people waking up to uh, a voluntary society. It's it's uh, it's exciting. Really exciting. I'm seeing black and yellow all over Facebook more and more <laughs> every day. It seems. Yeah. Did you see that song? Somebody did it like a song, black and yellow, black and yellow, black. But it was like a voluntarist version. Do you see that? Yeah, there's. I saw that one. That one has a uh, great. Uh, there's a uh, a guy on Twitter that follows me. Uh, Adam Smith. I, no, the name is drawing a blank. His name's Adam Smith. Uh, anywho, he sent me a, a link to uh, a video called the An uh, Anarcho Capitalist Theme Song. I don't know if you've seen that. And it's by a guy named uh, Randy Good, I think his name is. Uh, it's just an acoustic guitar. It's very folksy. Highly suggest you do a search and find that video. It is. It blew me away. I, I still have that song stuck in my head because it's literally him. He's literally he looks at every like political movement and he's like, yeah, I can get behind that. And then the next thing you know, that person's uh, pointing the gun at their head saying, you have to buy this or you have to do this or we have to go to war. And it's just, it's, it's hilarious. And it has like a, I think a speech at the end by Tom Woods. It's really well done. Oh, wow. So highly, yeah, it's very good. Hey, if you send me a link to that, I could put it on this video afterwards, you know, and put a screenshot of it or something. There's, yeah. There's another song that I really want someone to do. I don't, do you guys get this? Uh, it was called, uh, it was like a female bass down low, bass down low. I like my beats fast and my bass. Do you get that one in America? No, I've not heard that. Okay, one. It might... I know Rebel Inks not blown up in America though. Okay, it might be a British song, but I really want someone to rewrite that and do. Um... <laughs> if you... it goes like this, if you wanna get with me, there's some things you got to know. But I want the lyrics. 
uh, I like black and yellow in my cover photo. <laughs> but anyway, if you don't know the song, it won't mean anything. But <laughs> so, what's Rebel Link about? I'm not familiar, actually. Oh, uh, they're a. Uh... I'm not a huge fan of uh, metal music, uh, but Rebel Inc. is this anarch anarcho capitalist like, you know, uh, screw the man type of uh, music. And uh, they talk about the police state and uh, being a slave, but it's all, you know, hardcore metal. More, I'm more of just a rock kind of guy, not metal, but it's, it's uh, powerful stuff. I highly suggest you check out. Uh, one of their best songs is uh, We Are Killing the Future by Rebel Inc. Great song. Nice. So what do you reckon of all these hot libertarian chicks that seem to be popping up all over the place? Voluntarist vixens and all that type of thing? More power to them. I mean, we, we uh, unfortunately, the uh, liberty movement is uh, mostly male-dominated and more women need to get into the movement. I'm welcoming of any women coming into the movement. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, it's nice to have something to look at. <laughs> Quite frankly. Well, I'm, I'm a married man, so I'm not. I'm not looking at them for the the hotness. I got a hot wife to look at. So. <laughs> cool, good for you. Oh, wicked man. Let's see what other notes have I got here. Well, so um, what what issues are you mainly focused on? What are you most passionate about? What are you going to be focused on in the near future? Uh, I'm just focused on trying to uh, not just talk about uh, personal freedom, uh, self ownership, you know, liberty, but really just trying to. Anyone who is almost there, I'm just kind of like giving them that one little push, like, hey, you know, this just because this document says that they can steal from you doesn't mean they can steal from you, you know, and that you don't have, like in the States, you don't have constitutional rights. You have natural rights. You have rights because you're a human being, not because someone wrote it down on a piece of paper. And yeah. I'm just, just trying to push that more and more forward that, like, you know, you're a free person because you're a human being, not because some government of people you never met that already are passed away told you you are. Yeah. You did a really good video on your channel called You Lost Me at We. Would you just give us a brief rundown what you mean by that? Um, long story short, uh, if you read the U.S. Constitution, there's a preamble, and it goes, We the people of the United States, and... I'm, I'm an individual. I own myself. Uh, I am not a we. And if you look into the history of the Constitution, it was only signed by 39 people. And the entire time they wrote it, it was in secret. The press at that time didn't even know what was going on. And 39 people decided at the time, this, uh, they did a census three years later uh, in, this, in the United States at the time. There's almost 4 million people living. So... 39 people literally gave themselves the power to do to steal, to uh, go to, to fight wars, to, to regulate what you do with your life. Over 4 million people, and that's expanded to you know almost 400 million today. And it's it's kind of ridiculous that only 39 people can write down on a piece of paper that they give themselves power, and we're supposed to go along with it. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And it, it, that's such a crucial, that's such a trap that so many people, when you hear people say, uh, when you hear people speak about like the United States of Amer America, and they say we the people and the military is there to protect us and, you know, us and there's, of course, there's no such entity called we, right? There's no such thing. It doesn't exist. There's only individuals. Uh the buck stops with the individual. Them pulling that trigger, them doing that, it's up, it's their responsibility. But, uh, you know, the thing is, I used to be that guy. I used to be that person, you know, and I, I kind of feel like, even if I only wake a couple people up, you know, I feel like it's my responsibility to try to wake the people up where I was. Because someone, you know, ever, at some point, all, we were all status once, you know. Right. I'm sure you were a status once. I was a status once. And somebody woke you up. Someone you watched something, but or someone showed you this video or whatnot. And you know, it's, I'm just doing my part to spread the message as best I can as well. Yeah, it's so important to remember, and it's so easy to forget. I'm a bit of a hothead sometimes. I can be an asshole, and you know, sort of just being rude to people a bit. You're so right. You know, just 12 months ago, I was a status. So we got to be patient with people, haven't we? We got to like just introduce them to these ideas nicely rather than. Well, you gotta cocky. plant that seed. Now, I can, in some of my videos, I do get a little cocky and I do get a little aggressive with it, but it's not so much I'm not saying, hey, you're a horrible person because you're a statist. It's more so like, look at these facts, take it in, digest it in your mind, and, you know, think it over for a little bit, what you're following. 
that's really what I'm trying to say. Yeah, nice one. Listen, Rob, um, is there anything, any final words you want to say to our listeners? You know, any words of wisdom just before we wrap up? Uh, for first and foremost, don't be silent. Silence is the. Uh, that's how they get away with everything that they're doing. Too many people, they don't want to speak up because it's not popular or whatnot. Who cares if whatever whatever you think is popular, say it because it needs to be said. You know, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've lost friends trying to talk to them about liberty and personal freedom, and I'm sure other people have as well. But if someone isn't, if someone's, like case in point, like I, I, there's a Stefan Manu video about it. If someone supports the drug war and is advocating that someone come to your house and point a gun at your head and throw you in a cage, all for the simple fact for you having some sort of vegetation in your pocket, that person's probably not a good friend, and you should probably find other friends. Um, but yeah, speak out. Don't do you know? Don't be silent, and also do research. Look up what volunteerism is, and just keep spreading the message and be positive, and hope for a day where we can actually convince enough people to do so or you know also try and live free as best as you can don't uh, don't simply just go along with the state try and work outside the state as much as possible don't call the police unless you literally have to if there's like a a murder or something like that on your property uh, try and solve situations with other people in a voluntary nature don't bring the state involved as much as possible Awesome, man. Well said. It's been great speaking to you, Rob. We're going to keep an eye on your YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Volunteerist Rebel. And um, we can put your... What's your Facebook... What's your name on Facebook? What's the best way to find you? Uh, volu it's volu it's Voluntary Rebel 1. Uh, the, the link, I'll send you the link. Uh, yeah. But it's just Volunteerist Rebel on Facebook as well. And, and uh, you can also always follow me on Twitter. It's just at Voluntary Rebel. Awesome. Nice one, Rob. It's been great speaking to you. Thanks for your time, dream, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Alright, peace.